So we have a majority of the paint job done. And first off, let me say I did go back and repaint the uh, pale sand I put around the edge. Uh, after thinking about it, I decided that uh, darker color would be better. So I used driven gray. Uh, that does pose a problem though, because I had to remask it and the odds of getting the mask in the exact same position, even with the seam lines as a guide, uh, not that uh, good of a chance of that happening. So I had to touch it up a little bit. And um, also if there's any, if any of this gets damaged as I'm about to do, uh, the white's gonna show up from underneath, which is again, not very good. But we will soldier on here. So. I only did a base coat on this thing. I didn't do multiple highlights or anything through the airbrush. I just did one color. And so now I'm gonna try to um, change that a little bit. We're gonna uh, basically distress the paint, uh, quite literally, because I'm gonna use some sandpaper here. This is a thousand grit sandpaper. And I'm actually, I'm just gonna sand down the paint job a little bit. So some of the previous layers start showing up. So we get a little bit of, uh, well, actually literally quite, like I said, a little bit of distressed paint. So that's gonna add some weathering to it. Of course, you have to be very careful. You don't wanna to overdo this. So uh, just move very slowly, step by step, and also be very careful around the edges where the paint's gonna be thinner. We don't wanna sand that. So this is the first step. At this point, I've gloss coated the model, let that dry, and we moved on to the decals. I can't, I can't say that. It's decals. It's not decals. What's the matter with you people saying decals? Anyway, um, moving on to the decal phase. And the ones you get in the kit are pretty sad. That's it. You just get two. You don't even get four, you know. But uh, yeah, two of the, uh, the crosses, what do you call them? The, um, the Balkan cross. I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's something like that. It's not Balkan, it's something similar. The um, Balkan, yeah, the Balkan Cruz. Yeah, the Balkan Cross, that's right, that's right. I have it, I have it. Anyway, um, I went with aftermarket decals, so I got these for eight bucks. These are 172nd scale, super scale decals, number 728, what did I, fuck, Oh, okay. Yeah, basically, I just found something that had a bunch more of your um, the bar crosses here. So, yeah, we're putting them on right now. Going with the micro set, just for what the hell of it, since I have it. And where's my brush? Here you go. I'm putting these opposite of the yellow um, recognition stripes that I did with the idea of making it a bit more interesting. If I put them here, it's not necessarily... I'm off camera, sorry. If I put them here, it's not necessarily wrong, but I'm trying to make, you know, this area is interesting because of the yellow, and so I'm trying to make the area in between that also, oops, bent my decal there for a second. Trying to make the other area interesting as well. One thing you have to keep in mind, this does not have a uniform uh, seam line pattern on it, so I can't line it up with the seam lines. I have to eyeball it. Need to go a little lower. And I'm gonna finagle this a little bit. And I'm gonna see what else I can use on this decal sheet before moving on. Cause I want a little bit more color on this thing. So we have more weathering to do now. And here is where I face a problem. I've never done an aircraft before. Uh, so I'm a little lost as to where to take it here from here. Because I wanna weather it like a tank, which I shouldn't because uh, the aircraft tend to be made out of aluminum. You're not gonna have rust happening on them. And also you're not gonna have chips, paint chips happening uh, because there's not a whole lot of rocks to hit at 20,000 feet going at hundreds of miles an hour. Uh, if you do hit a rock, I think you kind of just crash. But how do we treat this thing? Do we treat it as an aircraft because I'm assuming this would be a low speed flying vehicle. You know, that wouldn't go too far off the ground. So I'm doing a little bit of, oops, that's way too much there. Hang on a second, I goofed up. Wipey, wipey. I'm doing a little bit of weathering, just a few chips along the edge. Um, and then I'll follow this up, hopefully, we'll see, with a little bit of, um, 
kind of like silver chipping. I don't want to overdo that though. Maybe we'll use graphite. But I just wanted something to break up some of the patterns. Uh, you know, distress the paint just a little bit more. So we're just going to do a little bit of this. Oh, by the way, this is my standard um, sanding pad. A little tough here, and we're using some... Um, a little too much there again. We're using uh, camo black brown from Vallejo. So, a little bit of this, and then we'll move on to something else. So via the airbrush, I coated the whole thing with some AK African dust effects and it came out a little bit gummy for some reason. I don't think, I probably should have stirred it because I don't hear the little BBs rattling around in there, but yeah, it's a little gummy coming off, but it's okay. Um, but anyway, I airbrushed it on an even coat because I wanted this basically kind of as a dusting layer and actually now that I put it on, I really wish I did a... Uh, uh, a desert camo for this thing. That would have looked awesome. All in browns, but oh well. But anyway, this is going to give a nice dust coat to the entire uh, saucer here. And another thing occurs, another way you can do this is, since it's a saucer, if you think, well, maybe it spins, you can do the dust effect as it's turning, but uh, I figure all the people in there would get nauseous if the thing spins all the time. Who knows? Maybe that's how the technology works. And I know I haven't been mentioning the bottom of the saucer too much uh, because, well, you're not going to see it. It's going to be like a half an inch off the ground, so I haven't put too much effort into the saucer. I did do the dust effect as well, and I think I'm still going to add a little bit of yellow onto the bottom, but uh, we're not going to do a lot of work on here because it's going to be mostly wasted. It's like painting the underside of a car, which people do. But you know what? I got a lot of other things to do as well, so I'm going to keep wiping this off best I can and uh, then we'll move on to the next step. I let the, what do we use, the dust effects uh, dry overnight and now I'm doing a few more um, just streaks here just to liven up the paint scheme a bit more. I got some Kursk Earth, I got some Neutral Gray, some Interior Wash, a few other little items. Uh, the only problem I'm having is it's coming off a little bit difficult because of that, um, I don't know what happened with that dust effects. It just still is, uh, did not dry very well. So normally I could just use a little bit of um, this little elbow grease to take this off or blend it in a bit more. I'm having to use odorless thinner instead though, which you have to be careful with because the odorless thinner really takes this off. So and my gray I use, it's a little too dark. You can see the oil is thinner, kind of makes it smear a bit more. So it's not exactly what we want. But I'm trying to do different panels here. And just to mix things up a little bit more. And I'm just, you can see, I'm trying to do like just a panel with a different color and work my way around. So I'm just going to do this a little bit more. We're getting really dirty. Probably more dirty, more dirt than I should be doing. You can see, yeah, that's that's because of the uh, the dust effects that should not come off. That um, it should come off a lot easier, and it's not. And actually, it's just kind of just rubbing away too. So, doing what I can here. So, quick product review. Trying something new right now. I have some. Uh, ammo by MIG oil brusher. Yes, we've gone full-blown makeup in modeling worlds here. Uh, not only we have pigments and eyeliners, I mean, we now have uh, lip gloss, whatever you want to call this the equivalent. Um, but this is oil paint in a little convenient brush form and decided to try it on this project. Um, I kind of thought it was was going to work like um, your streaking grime, all your enamel washes, and it's not. It is it is thinner than oil paint, slightly thinner, but it does act much more like, well, oil paint. I shouldn't be surprised like that, about that, than uh, your enamel wash. And I was trying it on the panel lines here, which it's not really made for that, I've quickly realized. 
I'm gonna go ahead and do it here, but this is taking way too long. And the dry time is extremely slow. But uh, what I can see this being used for, instead of doing this way, is using this for doing some, uh, adding a little bit of color to your painted panel lines. The, uh, like doing the dot technique with your oil paints, doing dots and then working, slowly blending those in with a little bit amount of uh, odorless thinner. I can see using this for that. Uh, the big benefit I see on this stuff is it's fairly cheap. It's, um, oh bugger, did I pull off all the prices I did? I think it's $4. Yeah, it's like 4 or $5 for a uh, tube here. And oil paints usually cost you, you can get really cheap oil paints, but uh, the good ones can cost you like anywhere between eight to $50 a, a tube, depending on the color. So it's uh, quite cost effective. It has a little brush in here as well, so it's easier to use. You open it up and dot, dot, dot. But uh, I'm using, by the way, I'm using um, Starship Filth right now. But I decided to use it here. It's kind of tedious putting it on all these panel lines. The other reason why I don't think it's that great for uh, doing this. But if you're doing small panel lines, it's okay. Uh, it doesn't dry as fast as the enamel wash though. But it does blend in a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up the bottom here because I already started it. And then we'll move on and use something a little bit different for the top seam lines. So I just want to give you a quick follow-up on the uh, oil liner uh, just to, so you have an idea how it works. You can see it smears around uh, much more than with the enamel wash. The enamel wash, if you wipe it off, it mostly comes right up, but this is kind of just spreading out. So uh, you can see uses for it, just not doing panel lines like I'm trying to use it here. But yeah, like I said before, if you want to add a little discoloration to a panel, a few spots of that and then just use a brush or even a q-tip and smear it around uh, it's gonna be okay here because we are on the bottom and I did need to dirty up the bottom a little bit anyway but uh, just watch how I'm doing this as compared to when we do do the enamel wash on the upper portion of the saucer So for the top, what I've done is gloss coated everything because when we were doing the streaking before, I did that over the dust effects because if those two blend together, that's fine. But when I'm doing the panel lining, uh, not only do I want to cover it because the dust uh, ended up a little bit too gummy, uh, also I don't want to remove the dust while I'm putting on the panel line. So sometimes you need to put a clear coat over between the two, sometimes you don't. Since these are doing two different effects, uh, I'm separating the two. So gloss coat on, and now we're doing the panel lines on the top with the uh, AK Interactive Brown and Blue Enamel Wash, which actually has a little bit of a hint of green in it, believe it or not. But it kind of works for this project. And if you can see the difference between what I did with those oil liners on the, um, on the bottom, you can see the enamel wash, how much easier it comes off uh, as opposed to that stuff. And it tends to... Uh, it doesn't smear around, it comes straight off. So that makes it a lot easier here. This area is still wet, so if I don't want to do it over this area uh, yet, because you see how it smears, I want to let that fully dry. So we'll just go to another area here, burn through all our Q-tips, and we just wipe it away, leaving in the panel lines. These panel lines are very thin, so I'm trying to go uh, against the panel lines rather than going across them. So more of the uh, material stays. And there's two ways you can do this. I went with dark colors. You can definitely try going lighter if you want a more dusty appearance, but the dust that we already did on the first step was, well, pretty dusty. So I didn't want to over dust it, as it were. And that's why I went with the darker color. But you can still see some of the dust showing through where too much of the wash is coming off because the uh, panel lines are so narrow which is okay. A little dust showing through is fine. So first of all, I'm testing out how close I can get the new camera. Looks like this is coming in pretty well, 
Goody. So, la two last things we need to do here. Um, I already dull coated the whole model, so it's looking pretty good right now. Spinny, spinny, spinny. And it's already, everything's assembled. And I don't use this too often. I'm gonna try using some uh, engine oil and fuel stain. Don't spill it. And these are just like the enamel washes, but these are uh, glossy. They're also very thick. And I'm just adding what to what I assume is the fuel uh, input area. I think it's actually a little bit big for that, but what the hell, that's what I'm doing it for. I'm just adding a few little droplets of this stuff. And because it, uh, it dries glossy, so it's going to look, you know, well, different than from the matte surface of the saucer. Stuff's a little hard to apply. I'm doing like a little drop and then kind of spreading it out a bit. I should probably, yeah, that's looking pretty good. I was just thinking, I was about to say, I should probably get some of the um, odorless thinner on standby to, might help to spread it out a little bit more. So, eh, it's a little too much actually. I'm gonna get some odorless thinner and clean that up a little bit, but uh, after I get this done, we're gonna do one more step. One last thing to do. Most of you who've watched any of my armor builds know what this step is. It's the graphite stage, yay! It's always so much fun. A little bit of graphite on your finger, rubbed along the edges. This is the one time I think it's appropriate um, because the, uh, assuming this is an aircraft made out of aluminum or aluminium, depending on your country of origin. Figure, whoops, a little too much there. Figure there's gonna be some metal showing through. Uh, I just wanna do a little bit around the edges. I think ideally this should be a lighter color. Like I said at the beginning of this or several times, I really have no idea how to do aircraft. But I think I'm going to just do this around the edges here and there. Maybe a few spots on some of the plates. I know for that, here I'll show you what I got I'm going to use for that. I can finally put these things to use. I never find a use for them. These are little uh, kind of smaller size cotton swabs. I forget who made these. Maybe it's me. I don't use them too much because they're not good. They don't absorb. But as a handy little stick for applying things, these should work pretty well. So I'm going to do a little bit of this here and there. And I gotta be careful not to touch anything. But uh, once I get this done, we'll be finished. And there we go, our finished Hanbu 2 German Flying Saucer. And it's okay. Um, it's, like I said, it's a fairly simple kit. Uh, my biggest problem is I just haven't, I don't know how to paint aircraft. This is the closest thing to aircraft I've really done. And uh, if I painted it as sci-fi, Maybe I should have taken it that way because I would have added more grime to it, but I was trying to come up with a more ironically realistic look to this thing. And um, the main problems here, which I mentioned, there are a number, is uh, the landing gear is difficult to put on, but at least you can skip that. And um, the texturing thing on the saucer, if you remember I talked about that in the first part, um, that's actually from Pegasus got a hold of me. And it was a problem, an issue with the mold that they had. Uh, that's the reason why it came out so rough. And to smooth it out, they tried polishing the mold and um, polishing the mold to take out the roughness as best they could. Ended up uh, taking away some of the uh, the seam lines or the, the depth of them. So you can see here where the seam lines, the wash didn't stick in there uh, as compared to the top part here where we have nice crisp seam lines. They're uh, much, much softer on here. Um, best way to fix that would be going in probably with a pen and redoing them all. Uh, I just, frankly, I don't have the time to do that. Uh, I want to move on to a different project. Uh, but overall, it's a, it's an okay kit. Um, $30, I would be a bit happier if it was under 24 or something like that, considering the number of problems and the, uh, the limited number of parts. But, uh, if you want to do something quick on a weekend, uh, you know, look for a bit something, a bit something more interesting and unusual than what you do, and I think regardless of what you build, you can call this different and unusual. Uh, so that's about it, and I gotta take some final photos of this thing, but it's kind of awkward to fit on my photo stand, so I'm gonna have to rig something up here. And uh, anyway, that's our Hanbu 2. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.